Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you guys about a revelation I had on May 3rd of this year. So, very recent. If you look on the blog, which if you look at the menu on the Fellowship website, cjccf.org, you can just click on Edification, and it'll take you to our blog. And it's called Revelation to the Churches of the Fellowship of Christ. Now, basically what happened was I was woken up about, I don't know, 3.20 something, around 3.30 in the morning by the Lord. And we had a very in-depth conversation. And then at the end of that conversation, he told me to go downstairs and write down this, this revelation. Now, I, I want to be clear that from my perspective, it's interesting because the Lord's told us, you can go and build a temple. Go and do this. Go and do that. And and all these things require a lot. They're, they're not things that one person can do by themselves. And in fact, it's something that even a couple people can't just do by themselves. Even if you were one very wealthy person, for example, you can't just go and build a temple. You're going to have to hire people to do it. And then those people that are doing it, they're doing it because you're paying them to do it. And when it's all done, it's just you sitting alone in an empty building. Now, I understand that, you know, we're not Amish. So when we get the funds to build a temple, it probably will be construction workers to do it. But when we do, it will be because it's serving a purpose. And so the Lord gives us a lot of instructions and things to do to serve a purpose that sometimes we're not, we're not ready yet for that. And this revelation talks about building a council of churches and a bishop's council and i've talked about the four pillars before for the fellowship and i'll talk about them again but i really want to start this off by reading the last verse in this revelation verse 17 and until the time shall come that the council of churches and the bishop's council shall be formed i say unto all my saints be ye ready for the need is great even now even so amen I think that that verse is very telling. And honestly, it it deeply saddens me because it's saying the Lord does things on, on his time, obviously. But he, he's also telling us that if we're not ready, he's not going to force us to do anything. But that doesn't mean the need isn't there or that the need isn't great. So as we get into this Thursday thought, I want you to recognize that what I'm about to talk about is something the Lord has said that we need to be ready for because the need even now is great. So for those that are familiar with the fellowship, I just want to quickly say that if properly set up or when properly set up, this isn't a tear down system like you see in a lot of Latter-day Saint churches. This is people all working together to facilitate growth of the individuals, not the organization. The organization grows simply because the individuals grow. That's always been, you know, I, I've had, huh, man, it's kind of depressing. It's like 30 years now of experience managing people. And pretty much everything I've done has been very successful. And the reason why is because I never focused on growing an organization. I always focused on growing people. And because those people grew, by default, the organization grew as well. I never worried about making anybody money. I worried about helping people out and doing the right things. And by doing that, I was able to make a lot of people, not myself, but a lot of other people, very successful and a lot of money. And now here we are in the fellowship. And the concept is the Lord has told us that we're supposed to have a first presidency. We're supposed to have a council of elders. And the council of elders made up of people on these facilitating growths in these four columns. We have the first presidency and the council of 50. And that is about leadership, receiving revelations, translating scriptures, and training people on their ministry and, and how to, you know, live lives, better lives as Christians, as Latter-day Saints. Then in the next column, you have the apostles. And with that, with them are the 70 elders. So just like the first presidency, that's not very many people. So they have a council of 50 to help. The apostles have 
70 elders to help them. What's their goal? Missionary work. They're to go out and preach the gospel to other Latter-day Saints, Christians, Jews, the tribes of Abraham, and say, hey, we're an ecumenical movement. We don't want you to come and join this church, but how can we work together? And then the question becomes, well, what do you do when you work together? And this revelation is going to talk about that a little bit. Part of that would be training in the Council of Fifty, you know, because you don't have to be a member of the fellowship or even a Latter-day Saint to be in the Council of Fifty, but part of it can also be what we're going to talk about today. Then the next column is the Quorum of Seven and then the, the Seventy, which are apostles in their own right. And they are the missionaries. They're the evangelists. Their job is to go out and preach the gospel to the world. And some of those people are going to go to whatever. Maybe they'll stay in their own homes and not join any churches. Do be non-denominational. Maybe they'll go and join some church. I don't know. Maybe they'll need a church. They're spiritually homeless and they want to join some sort of church in the fellowship. Well, that's the fourth column. That's the high council led by a patriarch and matriarch, which are the mother and father of the churches, of the saints. Those that are spiritually homeless and need a home as, as we're, you know, when you're moving from the church to the kingdom, that doesn't mean that people aren't going to meet in congregations. It means that we're larger than just a group of congregations calling themselves an organization, calling themselves a church. We're about the people themselves and growing people instead of growing organizations, as I've already said. This leaves a lot out. And we're not ready to even do that. And the Lord's saying, hey, all this is high priesthood stuff. But what about what about the low priesthood? And that would be the Levitical, the low priesthood, the, uh, the Levites, and those that are called to work in that particular branch of the priesthood. And it's not a lesser. I've talked about that before. It's merely the things that are needed here upon the earth. And so with that, the Lord has told us that at some point, we're going to need to build this council of churches. And it says, Many needs shall arise that should be more than one church or synagogue or congregation can contain. And these will need to reach out to, or for counsel and assistance. And there's many revelations that judgments of others have given, and we should look to those. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. But what the Lord wants to happen is to create a council of churches where every congregation, every church, every synagogue, every group nominates one person to go to represent them and say, this is what's going on. This is what we need. And this is how we can help. This is how we facilitate growth together. And basically to be a part of this council, when you send a representative, it does say in verse five, these shall pay one tenth of their income as a tithe. And that means the, the, the money coming in from the churches. And they that have more shall give more, even up to half of all they have. And they that have less shall give less. And they that have nothing shall give nothing. And nothing shall be demanded of any, but all are to give as moved by the Spirit. So the Lord is saying, look, I'd like for you guys to at least give 10%. If you've got more, give it. I'm not asking for everything, but give as much as you can, because this is helping people in need. But if you have nothing, then don't worry about it. Don't give anything at all. Just come. Just be here. And if you're moved by the Spirit to come and check it out and be a part of it, but you don't feel like you should be giving money yet, don't give money yet. Just keep in mind, if there's no money, then when people have needs, there's no way, there's, there's nothing that they can give to help out. So it's almost like an insurance plan, if you will. You may be a wealthy church right now, but something happens and there's some sort of financial difficulty in your area. And now you need to help some people and, and the cash just isn't there. Well, it's been allocated here and through money moved over from fellowship donations to assist all these various churches so we can help one another without going into debt. So it says, This council of churches shall be guided by the Holy Spirit and shall be, for the, and shall be the charitable arm of my fellowship. To guide its way, it shall be led by the bishop's council. Now, what's the bishop's council? That is going to be a high priest and high priestess called to be bishops and the head of the low or Levitical priesthood of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. Now, I will tell you that there is someone that has been called. This person has, is, is a Levite, 
And so this is the person who's supposed to be called. And the Lord has point blank said that that person cannot be replaced. They, you know, the only thing that can stop them from being the Levite for this generation is when this person passes away. But because this person is not accepted the call, which is fine, it's up to them, we are authorized to call someone else in their place until such a time, if it ever happens, that the official Levite accepts the call. And as part of the bishopric of this, bishop's council, they will call a... Um, oh, okay, sorry. They'll be the archbishops, the father and mother of all Levites, the fellowship of Christ, and they will call a first deacon and first rabbi. Um, and just, you know, the, the first deacon is in a congregation. That would be the person that... that uh, oversees or heads the deacons, those that are deacons and, and their duties in the congregation. And the first rabbi is the person who oversees or facilitates, I prefer the word facilitates, um, the teachers and, and what's going on as far as teaching for a congregation. So these would be the first deacon and first rabbi for the many churches, for the fellowship of Christ. And then in that council would be the patriarch and matriarch, which is the head of the high council for the fellowship of Christ. These are the people that sit on the council of elders. And so that obviously makes sense because since they're the ones who facilitate the needs of all of the churches, they would, of course, need to be on that council. And then the council of seven, which you know, the evangelists, the missionaries, they would unanimously call to, to represent them on this council. And then the council of churches itself will nominate and vote to, for someone to be a lay member on this council, so be nine, similar to the Council of Elders. Now, obviously, we are not there yet, so there's not a lot of information here. It does tell me that this, for whatever reason, needs to be Section 142 and 143, so those in Doctrine of Saints, please set aside for them. I don't know why or what's up with those numbers, but that's what the Lord told me to do, <clears throat> which is interesting because at this exact moment, uh, this revelation is Section 127. So we have quite a ways to go. There'll be several blank sections unless more is received or found between now and the time that the book is published. But what is the point of all this? Why is this, why is this needed? In verse 8, it says, These shall use all funds at their disposal to feed the poor, house the homeless, care for the widows and the orphans, and, and any that are in need or cannot care for themselves. Now, I know that smaller churches, this is a problem. I mean, I can tell you, I have people contacting me all the time saying, I, I'm in this financial situation. Can you help me? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. We're barely keeping the lights on here. And I've talked about that before. The Lord's blessed us and we are financially stable, but we are not financially climbing anywhere. We need tithes. We need offerings. We need funds because the Lord's told us, build a temple. Why are we building a temple? Community gardens to feed the homeless, to feed people spiritually and physically, to have orchards for food. So this is all a part. This all works together. The temples are overseen by the Levites. And so therefore, by the Levitical priesthood. And so therefore, this council for the fellowship would be there to help facilitate all the needs of the temple grounds and the needs of the congregations. Now, obviously, this is not mandatory. We're, we're not ready for this yet. But we need to prepare ourselves to be ready for this. And I also want to make sure it's, make it clear, make sure you know here that this is inviting not just the people who are in the fellowship churches, the fellowship congregations, but any church. So anyone that wants to join this is welcome. They just vote and say, hey, we're going to send this delegate, this representative, to go be a part of this council of churches. And I, I kind of see this almost like an insurance, if you will. So in one aspect, you have people who live in a, a very well-off area. So let's say, let's just go ahead and say that they feel moved by the Holy Spirit. That they have so much money coming in tithes and offerings. They're going to give 50% of everything that they have to this program. Then you've got another congregation. And they are very poor, very impoverished. They're, they're bringing in money, but... 
like the Fellowship now, they're barely keeping the lights on. Well, they would be able to come to the Council of Churches and let them know what their needs are, and then there would be money that could be moved over without anybody going into debt. One of the things that the Revelations and Doctrine of Saints, uh, one of the Revelations Joseph Smith gave us, talks about this idea of borrowing money from other churches, and I'm sure that's, that's possible. But this would be one step higher than that and merely give money to churches. And then if they get to a point where they're financially able, they can pay back into the fund, but it's not mandatory because it says that they pay one-tenth of their income, but nothing shall be demanded of any, but all are to give is moved by the Spirit. So this is the direction that the Lord wants us to, uh, to move into, in my mind, as quickly as possible. But in reality, as soon as we, the saints, are, are ready to actually start doing these things. And I know there's some people out there that are going to hear this and say, well, my church already has a program. My church already does this. And, and I want to tell you, and, and also there's people who are going to say, hey, there's going to be people that are going to double dip. They're going to go to multiple churches and take what they can. And to both of these, I want to say, and we will still be there to give. You want to double dip? You want to triple dip? You want to quadruple dip? That's between you and the Lord. You come and say that there's a need, we give the end. We don't judge anyone. King Benjamin taught us that in the Book of Mormon, Messiah. The Lord forgave us of our sins. Who are we to deny the beggar? The need is great, even now. I can't emphasize that enough. And I want to end this where we started. The need is great. So what's my Thursday thought for you? It's not, hey, we got to go find this, these people. Hey, we've got to go and create this program. We still need to recreate the Council of Elders. We still need to build temples. I have people contacting me asking where congregations are. When we don't have them, they just leave because they're not builders. We need builders. So once again, brothers and sisters, my Thursday thought for you is the need is great even now. Be ye ready. That is what the Lord told me yesterday. And so it's what I'm sharing with you today. How can you help? That's what I want you to think about. That's my thought. How can you get involved? How can you, if you're listening to this message, and I have people tell me, I know there's something special about what's going on here in this fellowship. But I also have people tell me, I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't feel like I'm worthy of this call. There's three things that are required to be called of God. Number one, obviously, you've got to be called by God. That's given. Number two, you have to accept that call. I can't tell you many people, the Lord's told me this person's called. And it, many of them even say, I know I'm called. But they don't feel qualified. And they don't have enough faith in themselves or in the Lord's call to them to do this. And then the third is they must be sustained by the saints. Because the saints have the ability to reject the Lord just like the person receiving the call does. You leave out any one of those, and a person is not truly fully called. But that doesn't mean the need isn't there. That doesn't mean that the need isn't great. I want to testify to you right now that I know that many of you that are watching this video are called. And I know that some of you know that you are called. And so therefore, I want to extend to you the hand of fellowship let you know the Lord is waiting and whether you feel ready or not you are ready and I want to remind you one last time that even now the need is great so that's my Thursday thought and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ amen